joining us today. I'm Robert Hale from the LifePoint family of churches here in Northern California, and we are thrilled to have you join us as we worship our Lord today. I pray that uh, these, these troubling times are uh, something that you're navigating through all right, and I believe that joining the, the family of God, coming together in praise and worship is going to help fortify and carry you through some of those times. I want us to look to scripture today as we look at uh, getting into worship. I want us to look at Colossians 3 verses 15 through 17. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. What's been ruling in your hearts lately? Think about that. We can look at a, a new change, a new beginning for you today, but you have to start with letting the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. If that's not the, the spirit of your heart today, I pray that it will be before the end of this message today. I pray that your life will be changed into one of peace and love as the Holy Father promises that, that you can have, that he can provide for you for this very day. I, as always, I encourage you not just to watch us, but to join us in worship of God the Father. Let's pray. Father, thank you for bringing us together today. We pray that our, our praises are, are uh, pleasing to you, and we pray that as you fill our lives, that our lives are changed to reflect who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let the children sing a song of liberation. The God of our salvation set us free. A death where is thy sting? The curse of sin is broken. The empty tomb stands open. Come and see. Oh, he's alive, alive, alive. Hallelujah, alive. Praise and glory to the Lamb. Yes, he's alive, alive. Alive, hallelujah, alive forever, amen. Well, let my heart sing out for Christ the one and only, so powerful and holy, rescued me. And death won't hurt me now, because he has redeemed me. No grave will ever keep me from my King. Oh, he's alive, alive. Alive, hallelujah, alive, praise and glory to the Lamb. Yes, he's alive, 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 hallelujah, alive forever, amen. Oh, he's alive, 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 hallelujah, alive, praise and glory to the Lamb. Yes, he's alive, alive. Alive, hallelujah, alive forever, amen. Lord, I come.
shall fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Lord, I need you so. Continuing on our series, in fact, we're concluding our series on new beginnings today. And what I want you to consider is, first of all, let's roll back a little bit. In new beginnings, what, what we suggested is we're taking a road trip. And again, who doesn't like to take a road trip? Because we like to get out and see and do new things. And certainly with some of the challenges and hardships of the past few months, we're all looking for new things. And a couple, three weeks ago, we talked about the fact that if we're going to go on a road trip and it, to start a new beginning, the first thing to do is to identify, to hear and listen to the voice of God. If we're going to ask God to tell us how to start a new beginning, where to go, we need to hear his voice. And then we talked a little bit about learning to prioritize, hearing his voice, but just kind of pushing aside what he tells us is not what, it's not really going to be productive. We talked last week about learning to prioritize so that we would, or the week before that, so that we would focus on what we are to do and how we're to do it so that his ways and his desires become our ultimate goal and we don't put our desires above his. And then last week we talked about the fact that we need the power of the Holy Spirit to really transform us, to drive this new beginning. Even if we know the path without the energy, without the power, without the force, without the gasoline, basically, we can't propel ourselves forward. And that's what His Holy Spirit's going to do for us. Not just give us the power, but also give us the direction to go the right way. Today, what I want us to talk about is the fact that as we get all these things behind us and we we learn to hear his voice and we learn to prioritize and we bring in the power of the Holy Spirit. What I want us to talk about is how we begin our new beginning and how vital that is. Because just starting a new beginning is one thing, but going on the right path is another thing. It's so important that we ask God for a plan, for a roadmap, for where we go. There have been so many things in my lifetime of, of more than 60 years where I've gone through challenges and I know you're going through challenges now and have gone through so many yourself as well. I've gone through tough times and most of them were of my own making because I made bad decisions. And sometimes they were challenges or hardships that lasted a day or a moment. Sometimes they were challenges that lasted for several years. And each day, it was just a matter of getting through that day and praying for a better tomorrow, hoping that one day this hardship was going to come to a close and thinking when it does, I'm going to get a new beginning. I did this over and over again. I've done this many times in my life. And I would come to a new beginning where that challenge or hardship was behind me. And I'd say, oh, finally, I get a new beginning. I get a fresh start. I know you can identify with that. No matter who you are, where you are, when you are. Oh, I get a fresh start. I'm going to start something anew and I'm not going to mess it up this time. And I would chart a path and I would start off in a new direction that seemed so good. And I would find myself back in the same position again of trouble and heartache, hardships, challenges. And that was because I charted that new path. Do you notice that word? I? 
I charted that new path. The difference that you can make in your life this very day with this new beginning is to say, Lord, chart my new path. Lord, create a roadmap for me. That's what I want to challenge you, encourage you to do, is to ask God to chart a roadmap for you. Our scripture today comes from Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Now, Joshua is the sixth book of the Bible. And it's a book that, that, tell, that follows a time when, um, well, when Moses had carried God's people out of slavery in Egypt. Moses had been with them for many years, for decades, in fact, carrying them out of slavery in Egypt through the challenges of the Red Sea. He had carried them through the, the hardships, the struggles, the worries, the gloom of 40 years in the desert, not knowing if they were going to have food or water or shelter. As he's taking them to the promised land, Moses was the only leader they knew. And now they're at the cusp. They're, they can see the promised land just as you, you feel sometimes like you're at the edge. You're going through such challenge, but you can see victory off on the horizon. You can see what you're looking for. But suddenly, out of nowhere, their leader, Moses, is killed. He's taken from them. And they're, worried, they're wondering, they're worrying, what's going to happen? And Joshua call, is called from the Lord. In Joshua 1, chapter, beginning in chapter 1, I'm going to read 1 through 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land that I'm about to give them. They had to cross a river to get to the, this promised land, just as you have challenges, obstacles that you have to cross in order to get to this new beginning, this promised land, this, this fresh new start. He said, get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite, Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea into the West. No one, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land. I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, especially for those last words, that you will be with us wherever we go. Thank you that your word is as powerful and true today as it was then. I pray that we'll open our hearts to what you have to say to us so that we'll be ready for a new beginning like Joshua was and we'll be ready to step through whatever doorway you have for us following your path, not ours. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So again, I want you to consider how vital it is as you step out on a new beginning to step into the right path. How you begin is crucial to how you're going to finish here, Joshua has, has gone up to see God. God has called to him as all of the Israelites are waiting, thinking, oh man, our leader has passed away. Our lead, the only leader we've known for decades has passed away. What are we going to do? So Joshua, he descends the mountain after meeting with, with God. And the Israelites ask, okay, what's the strategy? What's going on? 
What's the good news and what's the bad news? That's what they want to know. Where are we going from here? And Joshua looks at them and he says, well, I got good news for you. Jericho is ours. But we've got to cross that river to get to it. And we don't have any boats. We don't have any life rafts. Jericho is ours, but we have to cross that river to get to it. Think about this in your own life right now. What is your Jericho? What is it that God has planned for you that's there for you now that he wants to give you? Knowing, though, that there is a river in front of you that may seem daunting, but God's going to carry you through it. We're going to talk about that. You see, I believe both collectively as a body, individually, collectively as a church, that we have a Jericho that's before us. I believe that whatever's going on in your life, that you have a Jericho, you have a new beginning, a great future that's before you, before you as an individual, before you as, as, as your family, if you're part of a family. It could be a, a new job for you. It could be a new house. It could be a, a better relationship. It could be, if you're a student in school, maybe uh, better, better grades, or maybe that position you wanted on the football team. It could be almost anything, but God, I believe, has that Jericho for you. But I also believe that there's a river that we must wade through that frightens us at times, that we must cross. We have to rise to the event, but our God will carry us through this. And we have to understand, church, please hear me out on this. We have to understand that your success in reaching your Jericho is not dependent on your charisma. It's not. It's not dependent on your good looks. It's not dependent on your strength. It's not de uh, dependent on your determination. It's not dependent on people liking you. It's not depending, dependent on how intelligent you are. It's not dependent on any of that stuff. It's dependent on your obedience to God. That's what's going to make the difference. And that's what he's telling us here in the book of Joshua. It's dependent on your, your obedience to God. It's not dependent on your dynamic personality. God's looking for people that will obey him. And he reminds this to Joshua. If you're looking for a roadmap, it's time to look to God for that roadmap. It's time to let God be your pilot. Not your co-pilot. Let him be your pilot. Let him determine where you should go. And I know that some of us, including me, have had so many struggles with our past. We've had so many failings with our past. And we think, how can I possibly get there with the foundation I've laid? But I want to assure you of this right now. Your past does not define the path you're going to take. I'm going to say it again. Your past does not define the path that you're going to take. And to illustrate this, we just have to look at the New Testament. Look at two of the disciples. Look at Judas and Peter. Judas, who was the one that we all know, even non-Christians know, Judas is the one that betrayed Jesus Christ. He's the one that, that uh, turned him over to the Roman soldiers. Judas was known before this, though, as the intellectual one. Particularly if you get out of the Bible and just get into some of the historical writings, you'll find that Judas was well-respected. He was a, a business person. He knew how to run the books. He knew how to, to, to manage money. He was very thoughtful. He was very intelligent. He's very articulate. By contrast, Peter was a nice guy, but Peter was kind of a rumbling, kind of a babbling guy almost. He was kind of a run-of-the-mill guy. Nope, nobody, anybody would think would be any standout kind of person. He was just a regular go-to kind of guy. But now we take a look at history and we see that, again, their past did not define their path. Their past did not define their path. And it doesn't need to define yours either. Because Judas, this brilliant guy, is the one that the world knows turned Jesus over to the Roman soldiers. Judas wound up, he wound up um, embarrassed, wound up hating himself wound up being hated by others. He wound up crucifying himself, killing himself, hanging himself. 
because he felt so bad about what he had done. His life ended in misery. Peter, by contrast, though he had came from humbly, humble backgrounds, is known as one of the most prolific writers and speakers of the New Testament. He's known as a saint. His life was completely turned around because, again, his past did not define his future, his future path. Just like your past doesn't need to define your future path. And see, in, in these verses, uh, in Joshua, God is teaching us that he prepares people. He prepares those whom he calls. Joshua is called abruptly. He wasn't expecting this assignment. Just, just as you're not expecting, you may not have been expecting the new beginning that is being offered to you. He wasn't expecting this assignment. But God had been preparing him for years. Think about it. Joshua was born as a slave in Egypt. In fact, he was born in the family of Nun. He was the oldest son in the tribe of Ephraim. Now, if you think back about it, if you know your biblical history, he was born at a time when Pharaoh was under conviction from God, and Pharaoh was frightened of what was going on. He was fighting with God, basically. And one of the things Pharaoh did is he said, I want every firstborn male to be killed. Joshua was one of those. But Joshua was, was spared because God was putting Joshua through a time of preparation. Joshua was spared through Passover. The, Passover, the blood of the Passover lamb saved Joshua's life. So he was born as a slave who should have been killed, yet God spared him because he had a plan for him. And he spared you through some of the challenges of life because he has a plan for you too. The first time we really read about Joshua, though, is in Exodus 17, verse 8. Joshua was called on to lead the Israelites against the Amalekites. The next time we hear of him is in Exodus 24. Joshua is called up as an aide for Moses. He was called up to the mountain, to the mountaintop, to receive the Ten Commandments. God was preparing Joshua for this day when Moses would be gone. And he's been preparing you for whatever opportunities lie before you. That river that you have to cross to get to that opportunity, God's been preparing you so that you can cross that river through him, through his help. He's shaping you no matter what you're going through. Looking at verses 3 and 4, Joshua 1, 3 and 4. And 3 says, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon. Think about where your territory might extend. It might extend to say, your territory is going to extend because I'm going to promise you, I'm going to give you that new family you've wanted. You and your spouse have been wanting a, a new child. I'm going to give you that. Or maybe you're a single person and you've been, you've been long, longing for a spouse. I'm, I'm going to give you that. Or you've been longing for a new job or a new position on the basketball team. God's going to give you that. He says he's going to give that to you. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you. See, God knows your struggles as you're sitting there saying, I can't do this. Yeah, I want a family, but I'm not prepared for a family. Yeah, I want that new job, but I'm not prepared for a new job. I don't think I can handle the stress of that. But God knows your struggles, your hardships, and he promises to carry you through it. If God gives you tough duties, if he gives you tough challenges to get across that river, if he gives you those type of things, he'll supply you with great hope and power. He'll be there for you. God promises it. He promises he will be with us. And the death of Moses gave it gave Joshua one of his greatest challenges. But God said, I'm going to be with you even during this, this time of great stress. The Lord promises. He promises here that he will give us every place. The church. He's going to give us every place, but there's more to this story. We must follow and obey him to gain this gift. There's, the Bible teaches in the Old and New Testament light, there's really no honor without work. We must tread ahead. It even says, Thessalonians teaches, 
that if, if we don't work, we don't eat. We're supposed to work. We're supposed to, to move forward. Joshua here is to be the head of, the, of the, this tribe, the head of this, this group of Israelites. He's not just a chief, he's a leader. And God says, I'm going to give you this place, but he's also saying every place you go to must be one. You must engage in the battle. And that battle may be a physical war, or it may just be a battle to improve your mind, or a battle against Satan saying, I'm going to get into the word of God. I'm going to follow his will, not your will, Satan. But you've got to engage in the battle. That is of critical, critical importance. Joshua 1, verse 5 and 6 says, No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. That is so assuring to know that the creator of the universe, the Alpha and the Omega, the great I Am, the one who, the one who made everything, says he will be with you. He'll be with you wherever you go. I know, even myself, I am comforted to go into a social setting, to have my wife with me, it's more comforting to have her there, and she probably feels the same way. But you can have God with you wherever you go. What a great promise this is. His omnipotence will prevail no matter what her obstacles are. God's presence gives us perpetual victory, church. Any man, any man can conquer anything. Any man or woman can conquer anything. If you're fighting on the side of the Lord, no matter what you're going up against, you can conquer it. Think about history. Pharaoh, Pharaoh with all of his armies, all of his power, all of his money, all of his might, all of his arrogance, all of his pride, all of his position, all of his title, couldn't defeat God. God had a plan to take Moses and the Israelites out of there. Pharaoh couldn't stand up against them. The power of the Red Sea, they came to the Red Sea. They, what are we going to do? The Red Sea couldn't defeat God. God told Moses to part the sea, and he did. He said, step out there, and we're going to part that sea. The sea couldn't defeat God. Nothing you're going up against can defeat God. The, the wilderness, the stark challenges of the wilderness, 40 years of wandering through the wilderness with limited food and water and shelter, that couldn't defeat God as his people were, as he was bringing his people through. And what you're going through right now, whether it's COVID or financial challenge or struggles, emotional struggles, relationship struggles, none of that can be defeated or none of that can defeat God. God can and he will carry you through it. God's presence is promised to us irrespective of everything. Doesn't matter what's going on except sin. God is so holy. He's so pure. He's so righteous. He cannot even look upon sin. But sin can break that mold. Sin can break that funnel of power coming from the Holy Spirit. Sin separates us from God. But if you live your life following him, he will fulfill the power of the Spirit. And once given, once he gives his power, his Spirit, it's given forever until you break it with sin. Let's look at Joshua 1 verse 7. Be strong and very courageous. We get nervous. We feel weak. We feel underqualified feel like we can't handle it we can't do it be strong and very courageous be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go God's assistance is promised to us it's promised to, to, to Joshua and it's promised to us and to the Israelites but it, again it was conditional and it might justly be withdrawn upon their breach of those conditions God promises to walk this path in the new beginning with you. He promises to carry you across and through that river. 
But that promise can be broken. It can be drawn. It can be withdrawn. And here's how. No obedience means no encouragement. If you're not being responsible to follow God's will, you're not going to have the encouragement. We must diligently study and consider what God's will is and what our duty is. Joshua 1 verse 8 says, Keep this book of the law always on your lips. The Bible, keep it always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. You see, God's ways are not our ways. His plans don't depend on you and I. His plans, frankly, are sometimes best advanced by even eliminating people that are well qualified. If you or I are too arrogant or too prideful, maybe we are intellectually sound, we are uh, we're able to articulate ourselves well, we're good leaders, so we think, hey, we can do it on our own. We don't need God's plans. Sometimes his plans are best advanced by eliminating us and bringing in somebody else who will obey him and who is dependent on him. You see, Moses is a perfect example. He was perfect for this uh, to to carry them through the, the sea and the wilderness. But when it came to a time to get in, involved in the fortified cities, Joshua was God's choice. Joshua was the, was the man chosen because he was better equipped. He was better enabled for that. In fact, I'm told that today, military schools across the world, not just in the United States, but across the world, they study the plans of Joshua from hundreds of years ago because he was such a military genius. Moses was the right man to lead people out of slavery in Egypt, but Joshua was the best one to organize them into a civilized life. Joshua 1.9, as we begin to close, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be, will be with you wherever you go. We must learn, if we're going to ask God for his plan for our roadmap, we must learn that we have to, we have to do this. We have to not only know God's word, but we have to speak God's word. We have to meditate on God's word, and we have to obey God's word. And we must be willing to speak God's word publicly. That is so critical. We must do more than know God's word. We must live God's word. And we must be willing to pay the price to build up to the, the challenge, the workload to go across that river to get to Jericho. President James Garfield, before he became president, was the principal of Hiram College in Ohio. And a father asked him once, if the course of study could be simplified so that his son could get through things a little more quickly. And Garfield said, well, certainly. But it all depends on what you want to make of your boy. He said, because when God wants to make an oak tree, he takes several hundred years to make it. When he wants to make a squash, he requires only a couple of months our problem, church, according to a quote from Angus McGean, McQueen, is that we're producing too many squashes in the world today and not enough oak trees. We have at least 50 million Americans in the U.S. alone, but not, a, not many Joshua's. Do you want to be a Joshua? Follow God's plan for your life. Some of you are saying, where's my miracle? I want to ask you, are you walking in obedience to him? That's what's going to change your life. Let's look for God's plan and obey him. God bless you. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found was blind but now I see twice grace that taught my heart to see and grace my fears relieve how precious did that grace appear the hour 
I first believe my chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope, secures. He will my shield and portion me as long as life endures. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine. But God who calls me here below will be forever. Will be forever.